Hulk, Yoktu, and Bearbox. Maybe someone has seen my, uh, the previous speaker had a nice t-shirt. I wanted to ask him to borrow it from me. But so uh, um, I already gave this talk uh, six, exactly six months ago uh, at a meetup embedded par page. So the people who have, who have been there, they did see the slides they have already seen. But there are some new things, very interesting, new things, very, very interesting. Um, I'm starting with pre presenting myself, so I, I'm, I started kernel to be to being a kernel developer for drivers, so, so not the core stuff, in 2004. Basically, uh, digital TV drivers and, and some other stuff. Uh, I was a student at the time, and I wanted, to discover, I wanted to discover some things, so I discovered that one. I wanted to learn C a little bit more and, and USB and all that stuff, so I had some time, so I did it. Today I work as a contractor or freelancer, <coughs> and I mostly develop in C++, uh, C, Python, a little bit on compilers, and uh, testing frameworks. Uh, I'm adding testing frameworks because I, I find it more, and with experience, I find it more and more important to, to include this thing, and it should maybe be the first point because it's the most important thing in our, in our life. It should be the most important thing in our life. My company is called Yes which is an acronym for something. And uh, yes, I, uh, I, have, uh, I work directly with some companies. So, um, so yes, this is uh, the topic. So I start with an intro uh, and then, uh, then we will see. So one client, one year ago, exactly one year ago, uh, a, a client uh, came up to me and asked me to implement a remote upgrade strategy for his device because there was none. And, uh, and uh, it was not that easy, but I found a solution. Well, we found a solution because there were some colleagues, and uh, and I, th I think making a talk out of it is interesting because it was the first time I was really working on embedded units, not on the kernel, but on the low-level user space side, if, if you want. And uh, I learned a lot of stuff, and I th maybe it's interesting for other people. Uh, that's why the talk. So uh, the project, what's the project? The project is a, a LoRa gateway. Uh, a LoRa, uh, who knows LoRa? LoRa band? Okay, so you all, who, who doesn't know what is a LoRa gateway? Yeah, please explain. A LoRa gateway is, so LoRa is, <laughs> do you, Mike, you know what is LoRa? Or no, I don't know. LoRa is a, is a low, <laughs> really or are you joking? Seriously. So, so <laughs> LoRa is a, is, a, is a wireless network, which to come, so I, I'm explaining it how I understood it, maybe it's not correct. It's a, wire, it's, a, it's a wireless network where devices which have very, 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 uh, which are battery powered, so can communicate with, with uh, can communicate not with each other, but with a, with a, with a, with a central power, with, with something. And, and it has, uh, and those devices should last five years or even more on a simple battery. So there are some processors which are consuming very, very few milliwatts. And there's the LoRa, which, uh, which, which, which is a communication standard. There are others like Sigfox and, uh, and, and NB-IoT. Um, and you have uh, uh, something like 12 bytes of payload, which you can send every two minutes, and you can receive that. Uh, so there are some very strict constraints regarding uh, bandwidth and uh, network usage. And it's designed for low power, low power devices. So is, is it sufficient for? So a gateway is something which has a, which is not battery powered, which will, which which has an antenna and which will receive uh, the requests from the lower devices in a radius of 50 kilometers, up to 50 kilometers, or more or less. And it will relay it to a cloud or to a server called a network server. So, uh, okay. So, one client asked me to make an update to design an update strategy for such a device. So, so we designed the hardware and the uh, and everything around it, the box and the and his client uh, yes, his client uh, want to, is a is a well known big company in France, which is making trains. Uh, and they have a spec, uh, and they followed the spec, uh, making making it quite restrictive what can be used and what can be done. So, uh, 
So my client selected the Phytech uh, Phycor EMX uh, 7 UL, which has some ARM uh, Cortex A7. Which one? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and don't care. So, uh, um, okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, where was I? So they said they, 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 they are some territory, of course, with the lower gateway and all that stuff, which, which, we, which I won't mention any further. But uh, the, the important thing is they selected this platform, Phytech, and Phytech provides a, a, a customizable Yocto distribution. Um, so uh, before I started, with, before I worked on this project, uh, the other team, which ha already has developed all the application, the application layer was ready. And uh, uh, the application layer was ready and everything was based uh, on the on the Phytex distribution of 2018, which was based on Yocto 2.2 called Morty. It is using Bearbox as a bootloader, uh, which handles the device tree, uh, from what I understand, very well and normally. So, uh, but there was no standard system update mechanism. Of course, there was the EPK, I, what do you say, APK, uh, <coughs> OPKG uh, packaging system, but there was n no uh, system update uh, mechanism, which is flashing the whole world file system. It wasn't there. So uh, the device tree. I mentioned the device tree because it is important for what will happen later. So the device tree well handled. What I mean, what I mean is that Bearbox has the has the part of the device tree for the device present. And then uh, when it boots the kernel, it will load the kernel device tree and will merge it. I'm not sure if it's the right term, but it will merge the both, de both device trees. So, so the devices only known to Bearbox are also known to the kernel and thus to user space. This is, a, this is an important mechanism. That's why I mentioned it here. Okay. Mm. Okay. So the system configuration on the, on by default, if you buy, if you get the bear, the the Phytech, uh, distribution at that time and the card, what they do is basically they they give you everything so that for an application developer it is it is very easy to do an application. And what you get is you you have uh, volumes uh, on your on your on your uh, 200, uh, 212 megabyte uh, flash NAND flash. One is Bearbox, one is the Bearbox environment. You have one kernel, one DTB. And one rootfs partition, which is taking up uh, all the rest of the of the, of the of the flash. Okay. So the system was developed, and what we what we had put in place was <coughs> a, a remote SSH tunnel. So each system is initiating a connection to a well-known server uh, for uh, with a dedicated port, so we can access the device from the distance remotely. Um, that's bizarre, no? Isn't it? I, I, but uh, it was the only way. We didn't want to use a, a VPN, and, and we were not really sure what to do. So the first uh, 100 devices were delivered in June 2018. And uh, yeah, we delivered. It was working. In September 2018, so exactly one year ago, a software update uh, required an update of the base system because we needed to update the kernel and libc. Of course, of course. And uh, a thing I don't write on the slides, uh, and I won't say, is that the client, when we when we asked beforehand, do you want an update mechanism which is system-wide? He said, no, no, it will, be, it will be too expensive. We don't want it. So, and we were too naive to say, okay, then he doesn't want it. So it's, it's basically our fault. We should have insisted, let's say, uh, let's face it. So now we needed something. The thing was dis deployed, everything was running, and we need a, we need a system update. Um, so we tried something to do with OPK, G, uh, and IPK, and it didn't work, or, or at least was not satisfied. I was not satisfied. During my talk six months ago, someone said to me it should have worked. So maybe we should retry because, uh, but no, no, we have something. Uh, spoiler alert, we have something which works, so we won't, uh, we won't uh, try something else. Um, so we took the decision to, to study uh, upgrade possibilities. And by pure chance, there was embedded recipes uh, from one year ago, and there was Marek, 
and I discussed, uh, I think, two hours with him to to have some feedback of what is possible, what does he think in this situation, what could be done, and so on and so on. And he gave me some serious input. Uh, so uh, if we have a chance, I need to pay you a, a, ber a beverage of your choice. Okay, two beverages of your choice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, in October it was decision time and the customer realized that it was a mistake to not have uh, paid uh, beforehand, for, for to not have paid enough, to, to have said no. So we, we convinced <coughs> the customer that we need, uh, that, we need that. Uh, and we, uh, so we call that word, are you ready to pay? Yes, I'm ready to pay because I need it, so we, uh, we pay, okay. So uh, the first step was to define an upstage strategy and the second step was to f define an upgrade strategy strategy for the already deployed one health system which are already installed in trains and uh, going back into the trains to dismantle all that, get it back to the office will cost much more than it would cost to, to, to develop a, a software solution. Yes. So uh, first, I first, so I will start presenting what we chose to uh, come architecture for for the new system, which is updatable, and then I will talk about the the, the system which we used, if I have still time, which which uh, which we choose to upgrade the devices. Uh, so we we I will list some facts here which were our conclusions after the after thinking and trying some things. First, the first most important thing is use what exists. I, we don't want to reinvent the wheel because it is already very nice, the wheel, so don't, if something is, but what does exist? So uh, first of all, uh, we found out that the system as it is running with UBFS occupying the whole rootFS, it is not possible to do something from your space because the system running on UBFS, it's not possible. Uh, of course, everything is possible. You could, you could use a RAMFS and you switch food and you, you do some magic, but it, I, I consider it too, uh, too, uh, bricolage, too, uh, too hacky. And not, uh, yes, it was, it was your idea. And I was not really a big fan of it, but maybe it would have worked. Um, so we need to put processes which are doing the upgrade somewhere else to change the UB uh, configuration. And somewhere else, of course, can be Bearbox, the bootloader, because the bootloader uh, has access to everything. Then we found out that Bearbox had bootchooser, which is a feature of Bearbox, which was not activated of the on the Bearbox which we have deployed, of course. <laughs> because it is not necessary, there's only one system. Bearbox has what is called a state partition, so uh, it's a state, uh, some, it's a structure of data which is stored somewhere out of, uh, not on the not on the norm, the somewhere else. Uh, Bearbox has a file system inside its environment, so we can actually uh, uh, store files at build time and also uh, at uh, at any time basically. Bearbox can update itself. Very important because we will need a new version of Bearbox to have the feature inside. Uh, and we can access the Bearbox environment from everywhere, so also from Linux user space. And there's something called uh, ROC. I know, I, I'm not sure if it is the right pronunciation. ROC, 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 which is called, which is robust auto update controller, which creates something which are called bundles, which are signed. And uh, bundles are basically a combination of, uh, by default, rootfs, kernel, device tree, uh, and other, uh, we can add other things. <coughs> and uh, a real good help was newer version of the Fitech distro, use already all that stuff. I think they added it in June 2018. And I did all the, I, I, and it was very interesting because all the, all the conclusions I made myself, I found it in how they did afterwards. So I was very happy that my, my, my logic was the right one. Okay. So the, the new partition, the new partitioning, I will try to show uh, a schema which has uh, moved because of why, I don't know. So this is the, the partitioning, uh, 
or volumes the, as it is uh, now. So we have two systems. Every system has its kernel, its device tree blob, and the root FS. And we have something which is called kernel rescue uh, initram FS. Um, okay. I will come later to uh, why this can be useful and for what it is used and what, uh, what can be problematic. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, I will get to my press because, okay, so, so basically uh, this, this, uh, this block here is, is the bare box boot block. So what is happening uh, with the final bare box which contains all the features I need for doing the system update? Uh, what we have is that it is booting, doing some init stuff, and then it will run the boot chooser feature. And the boot chooser feature will look up in the bare box state uh, some information about the system. And this some information actually contains uh, the, the, the priority and the counter for each system, which is system zero, system one. And the boot chooser will choose the system to boot with the highest priority, and, uh, and it will boot it if the count is not zero. So if you have two systems, for example, two systems with a priority of 20 and 10, and count 3, 3, but it will boot the system zero, which has a priority 20. And if it is, uh, for, for example, you have, a, you have a system zero, which has a priority of 20, but count zero, it will boot the system one. And if count is zero, uh, for both systems, it will boot the rescue, whatever whatever happens. That's the strategy we chose, and that's also the strategy uh, proposed, uh, suggested by Fitek. Now, I think, at least at the time uh, I looked up, it was like that. So, what are the count, what is the count used for? Actually, the count is initialized to three by default, and when you boot it, it will decrement the count by one. And then the rootfs, the, the user space Linux, which is running a daemon, will reset the count to three if the boot was successful. Or you can add custom conditions like self checks or, or, or anything you want uh, as a prerequisite to reset the count. The goal is that you have, uh, that you have uh, if you have a faulty system, which is not booting correctly, the watchdog will reset it. <coughs> and uh, Bearbox will then try three times. It will decrease the count, it will be two. It will try, it won't work. One, it will, it will try, it works, zero, oh, I, will, I won't try any, anymore. I will switch to the next one. So in fact, it is the, the goal is to use it and when you do an upgrade, an, an, an update of the other system, uh, if the update was not working correctly, so you, it, will, it will eventually fall back to the, to the current system, which still works because it was doing the update. Is that, is that clear for this logic? Is it clear for, for everyone because it's, it's actually it's super simple and uh, very powerful, I think, my thinking. Okay. So the state here, which is a, which is the kind of structure for, for keeping some information somewhere else, so not in the known flash, uh, but somewhere else. So what, what, what we did is we used the EEPROM because uh, there's an EEPROM which is used for nothing, so, uh, and we need some, some storage for something else, and Fitec is doing the same, so we added, uh, we added the information for, for Bootchoser in the EEPROM. And it is defined in the device tree. Um, yes, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice thing. Okay. So the what we needed to add uh, also to Bearbox, uh, the new version of Bearbox was scripts to, to load the right system, to mount the root FS, the right root FS, and, and to, to so some stuff, some boilerplate to make it work correctly. Uh, and very important also, we needed the target tools from Bearbox. We added it to the root FS. So, uh, so that you can access the bare box things from user space. Uh, yes. Okay. Rauk. What is Rauk? Rauk is a, what I said earlier, it's, it's a tool to, to upgrade systems. Rauk has bundles. Bundles are rootfs kernel and device tree. And, it is, uh, and if you want to install a bundle on a system, you, you write one line which contains three words. 
and it will upgrade the other system. And to, uh, and to integrate it into, into Yocto, there's a, there's a meta package called MetaRauk. This provides a bundle class, which allows you to define your bundle containing your images and, and, your, and, uh, and your blobs you want to add uh, to your bundle. Uh, you need to add some certificates. Yes, you, you need to add some certificates because without, uh, without uh, which I used to, to sign your bundles. Without it, it does not work. And then in your Yocto code, you just write the big uh, the bundle target and it will create a bundle. I, I won't show the source code here. It's, it's really not, it's really simple, really simple. And it worked, actually it worked out of the box. There was nothing to be done. What I did, uh, what I did, I had to backport some changes from the, from the latest, from the master branch of, of, of the Meta Rauk because the, the branch for Morty was so old, there was a, so I backported all the changes and it was not working because there was one feature which was using Meden build and Meden build was not supported by Yocti, by Yocto uh, 2.2, so I had to remove some stuff. So it was, I think it's called plumber, plumbering, no? If you, if you plumbing, if you, I'm a plumber. <laughs> I didn't know, but now I know what is plumber. Um, so I have a demo. It's not a real demo. It's it's a recorded demo. So the demo will show um, an update using Rauk. And I will pause. So uh, Adrien, uh, Adrien uh, recorded the demo for me with, with ASCII Cinema, which is a super nice tool because it allows to make demos and presentations without any problem because the hardware is not working or whatever. So uh, because you record everything, ah, you don't see it. Huh? It's maybe too big even, it could. Be. <laughs> ah, no, it's too small, no, it's too big. Okay. Oh, the window has changed again. No, but you see everything there. Okay. So, so Adrien is a colleague of mine who recorded the demo for me. So we're starting a TIO, which is a, which is a, a terminal, which is a, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> which connects, we have a serial port and it's, it's, it's uh, okay. Who, who knows TIO? Nobody knows TIO? <laughs> it's the best tool to do a serial, uh, to, to, to use a. No, no, it's, it's the best tool because you can stop and, and it's, <laughs> It's connect, reconnecting. <laughs> so, okay, so, so I'm, I, I'm connecting myself to, I'm connecting myself to the serial port and, uh, he's typing his password, I think, yes. So this is the, the login prompt of, uh, of, uh, of the system running. Um, he will log as root, and what will he show us? Ah, he will reboot. So we will reboot to, uh, to Brearbox, that's the goal. Okay, so now, now, we will, now we are in Brearbox, in the Brearbox shell, and we will investigate the, the, the Brearbox state, or the boot chooser state. So here it shows us that we have two systems, System zero and system one. Um, they have the priority and the remaining attempts. So now if we boot with the default boot chooser, it will boot the system zero because it has priority tw 20 and it has still remaining attempts to uh, three. Okay. 
So now we dump the, the bare box state. So, so calling this def info state will, will read, in fact, the EEPROM, or it was already read, I think. And so we will see the variables uh, which we have defined in the device tree, which contain actually the information we have just seen earlier by, uh, inter, uh, by asking Buchula to, so to show its status. And now we will boot. So and, uh, as we can see here, he's, uh, boot, the priority is to choose, uh, Bearbox starts booting with boot chooser. Ah, that was too fast. Boot chooser shows the system zero. In the script system zero, we mount uh, everything which has to be mounted. And then we, uh, we, boot. we boot. It's booting fast, huh? So the goal is to uh, afterwards I, I will show you that we can uh, we can uh, we can get the same information in in, uh, in Linux user space. Um, so here we used Bearbox state, which is a tool uh, which is in the, in the Bearbox target tools, which shows us the state, and we find the same information. What has already happened here, which we don't, which we do, which we didn't see, is that Bearbox has decremented the counter to two, and the rogue daemon, which turns on, which runs in the background, has already re-incremented, uh, resetted the count because the boot was successful. Um, okay. So now we uh, now there's a tool rogue which which uh, which asks the. the I really have a problem with my English since I'm living in France, um, which, which contacts the, 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 the rogue demon to ask what is your status. And the rogue demon knows uh, we are which, uh, with a config file uh, what, what are the systems, what are the partitions, the volumes, what, are, what exists, uh, what do I have, and it also has a status. So it says, uh, it, says uh, it has booted from system zero the activated root FS system is, is root FS zero. And uh, DTB, uh, so this all, the, all this, the, the slots which are existing, which can be updated with a, with a bundle. Uh, luckily, we already had the bundle, we added the bundle. So but we, the bundle was generated with, uh, with via Yocto. And it will in, the, in your image folder, it will, will create a rauk b file, which is the bundle containing everything signed. We can ask Rauk to, to tell us more about the bundle. So it is verifying the bundle, checking that the checksum, checksum is okay and that the signature with, with the private key uh, is correct. Why it takes us, we should have removed the delay. What do we see here? Yeah, everything, everything, is, everything is fine. Everything is fine. And what does it contain? It contains uh, th three uh, blobs, a root FS, a kernel, and a device tree. And now we will install it. It will be very fast. If we uh, do not do typos. So uh, we, a lot of information, basically it's telling us that uh, it will update the other the other root FS, the other system, installing a new <laughs> kernel and a new a new file system. It should, should be faster. <laughs> it has crashed. I don't know if I did if I paused the game or not. You didn't sacrifice enough to the bell cow. <laughs> that did. <laughs> when I tested it yesterday it worked and he was not doing uh, he was not waiting at all. What we were, oh, what, what is this? Where are these cars? Some projector. Yeah, this is a projector. Ah, projector. Yeah. Okay. 
So what we would have seen, in fact, is that after it will say successfully updated, we would have rebooted uh, the, 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 PC, the, the device and then booted normally. We would have seen that, we would have seen that, boot, that the priorities have switched. 20 is now system R1 and uh, 10 is system zero. And boot user would have chosen system one and it would have booted and it would have worked. You must you simply believe me. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Do I still have some time or? So uh, actually uh, now the tricky part, we, we designed this the strategy, we tried it in our offices, it worked fine. The question was now how to upgrade the, the devices which have already been deployed. So, uh, so yes, we, we, uh, we uh, it's actually very simple. We just need to convert the, the system from a single uh, system installation to a dual installation, very simple. Copy new bare box kernel root FS to the new root FS. We are STP because we have, we are STP because we are, we have our reverse SSH tunnel. We need to instru instrument bare box from user space to, to, uh, to do a self upgrade because we need boot user and other features. And we need to place some scripts to do that. We need to reboot. We, do some, we need to do some meditation during three minutes, and afterwards our SSH reverse tunnel will, will, will reappear. Simple. Uh, basically, these are really the steps <laughs> we are doing. So uh, what happens, the, the everything works. We can, we can place a new script fired from user space to bare box environment, uh, and, and when, when we boot to bare box, they will be executed. So we can do anything from, from user space. We can do anything to bare box from user space. So having said that, we can, we can tell <coughs> it, uh, I will come later. So I will describe now what happens to the, in, uh, in, the, in the three minutes uh, of meditation. So uh, we connect to the system and we inject the scripts which will be executed at boot and we will reboot. And then we will start to pray and uh, what will happen in the background is that the old bare box will mount the root FS, will check in a certain path that some images are present and uh, update itself. In the, in the new bare box, we will have the scripts which will do, we have the scripts which will do the upgrade if some files are present. So we will, can now reset the system and it will boot into the new bare box. The new bare box will uh, mount the root FS, copy, copy the images, uh, root FS kernel and device tree to the RAM file system. It will also copy some specific config files in a backup deal in the bare box environment. Uh, especially non in, in this case, it was the SSH port for the reverse tunnel, which was specific to each device. Then it will do the repartitioning. It will flash the root FS, both root FS and the kernel and device tree. It will reset the, the state, reset boot chooser. It will self-destruct itself, so basically it will move the script, and it will reset. And every, if everything was doing well in the new Linux, was, was going well in the new Linux, we will, we will in the first boot only, uh, we, will, we will get to the backup deal which, I, which we put previously in the bare box environment to get back the config files to do the SSH connection. Of course, we tried it before in the office, and it was always working. Always. And it always worked, even for the 100 devices. There was not. <laughs> so, but, but it was a manual task. So copying all the, doing the SSH, there was a script, but it was copying the SSH and launching device one by one each device because we were, not we were not confident, even at the 90th device, we were not confident it could still break. And the risk was actually that a device in a train is shut down in the wrong moment. That was the only risk. What's plan B? Plan B is to get the device out of the train. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Though there's an additional site. So this was a status in March 2019. Since then, there were two things which have appeared. <laughs> uh, maybe someone has noticed. I was talking about the Rescue 5 system, but I didn't say anything about it uh, afterwards. 
which is normally because we did not care about it. We said, okay, we will do the upgrade mechanism with our, so that we can do a system update. And as we have the system update with Rogue in place, we can later, <laughs> we can later think about the, the, what we will do in the rescue system. Because the rescue system, what could it do? It could connect via the, the 3G connection to do an, uh, an SSH connection to an emergency port or whatever, or send whatever, and QTT, whatever. But uh, the rescue system we installed was doing nothing. <laughs> if booted, it was just waiting on the console to log in. <laughs> but it's normal. We, why should it? Why should we boot the 100 devices which were running? We never saw any problem. So why should it go into the rescue system? Now actually, we we never saw any problem. Doesn't mean there was no problem. There was a problem which we didn't see. So. I had no functionality. I was, uh, well, the idea was to we get to it later. So, with the new nice super new super robust system of three attempts, and then if it is once once the system has reached count zero, we will forget about it. Well, actually, what do you need to have the problem? What do you need to have to go? What do you need to go to a rescue system? Well, you just need six consecutive boots, which are not succeeding, and you will leave, you will end up in the rescue system. Six consecutive boots in this system means one minute. If, for example, at 10 seconds boot time, the system crashes. And what can make the system crash? A power supply problem. Because when you boot your kernel, it powers on all those devices, and there's a, there's a current drain, which makes that the power supervisor, if, if it goes below a certain voltage, it will simply shut down uh, the system. And this is exactly what happened to 25 devices. Before we, before we noticed what happened. And this is due to, uh, it's bad luck. Uh, it, it, no, it, no, it's not bad luck. It's, we were too naive. It's actually our problem. But it was also bad luck because the, 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 our customer, um, it seems that in a train you have for this kind of equipment, you have two power supplies. One will power up as soon as the, the wagon, wagon connects, and the other one will power up when it is stable. And they decided, because there was, this was not defined in the spec, of the, of, uh, of even of the customer, they decided to plug it to the non-stable power, power supply. So there was, in fact, a, the normal power supply is 24 volts, and, uh, but the device works on between uh, 12 and 100. So what happened is that everyone is powering up. When you plug the wagon, everyone is powering up, so there was a fluctuation. And when our device booted, it consumed so much that it go, was going to below 12 volts. And, and it rebooted, and it seems that on some wagons, the, the instability is during one minute or two minutes, so <laughs> you, end up in the, you end up in the rescue system quite easily. And we were lucky to have found it out bec because the, that was, uh, was, it was, um, how do you say, it was softening a little bit the, the relationship with the customer because it was a little, a small part of the problem was their problem. Practically, so they were uh, quite fair actually to us. Yeah, okay, power, power supply variation to kernel boot. Second problem, the SSL, <laughs> <laughs> the SSL certificate I generated to have something ready. It was valid for one year only, so uh, for, uh, it would have end in October 2019, so in one month. And there was no certificate, we did not, so this was, a, was this, uh, this problem is much easier to solve because we were aware of it, but uh, as usually you push it uh, like the homework over the weekend, you do it uh, Sunday evening. So what we are currently doing is we are deploying an update which has a certificate of 100 years validity. <laughs> you are laughing, you are laughing, but I won't I won't denounce people. But uh, we asked people who know. Is it a 32 bit system because it's 38? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we will have updates, the system updates, which will, which will fix that problem. Because it actually, the using SSL is not necessary for us because the, 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 the update chain is, is completely closed. There's no external access. Everything is under control uh, <laughs> by people. So if there's a hacker which will, which will, mani uh, which will manipulate a rogue bundle to update a system, yeah, okay. It's not the system is not is not important for the train, from what I what I into, was told. <laughs> so no life is at stake. There's just a lamp which is not going on somewhere. So. Oh no. 
Okay. So this is actually a, a, a lesson learned. A lesson, this is this is really this is really um, this is actually a bar embarrassing that we did not do it. So everything you don't test or you don't think before it will fail in production. You think it's a generic rule. Enough is not. Enough is not. Okay. okay. So this is the two things. In general, this project was com and it was a success because we deployed a system and everything is working. And now we have a, we have a return of experience and for future products. We already used it in future products uh, with all those problems solved. So we can only get better. Uh, learning by doing. Okay. Questions? So the SSH uh, remote tunnel was running over LoRa 1. No. No, no, no. Huh? It's really crashed. That's crazy. The, the, the LoRa 1 gateway, the, so it's, it's the gateway, it's, it's, a, it's a router between LoRa and 3G. So the SSH was running over the 3G, 4G connection. Ah, okay. Yeah, Nova else I guess SSH. it would take a long time to yeah. copy the, the bundle yeah. to the system. Just with 12 bytes, we prepared 12 <laughs> <The> minutes. minutes. <laughs> 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 Try to calculate how long the handshake yeah, was. No, you, in LoRa you have actually something they call broadcast in LoRa for class C devices, so you can, it will tell, still take years, <laughs> but at least you can, uh, you can supply all devices at the same time, not using... But not over SSH tunnels, because these will be individual tunnels. Yeah, yeah, there's no, there, there, there's no, there, I'm not aware of a TCP stack over law, maybe it exists, but I, I, it would be so, <laughs> in the 12 bytes you will have the header and then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess you also use the hardware watchdog to reboot the system if it doesn't yes. boot well. Yes, uh, but I, uh, yes, 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 yeah, the, the, the bearbox is activating the hardware watchdog. And if, it, if the kernel crashes, it will, it will be rebooted to, uh, so you said you establish an SSH tunnel from the uh, from that device. Yeah. Is that it? Um, do you use something like Marsh to deal with the unstable flaky connection? No, I'm using a systemd service, which oh. will, if the tunnel crashes, if the tunnel crashes, it will reconnect. This is the most stable thing I have ever seen around SSH. Okay. Uh, there was a, there was a, there's a tool I don't remember the name, which is doing that. Marsh. Maybe. Mobile shell. So if you use a systemd service, you have one line. <laughs> and and you, you, yeah. I have another question about your use of uh, UBI. Um, so do you have some sort of service that kind of continuously reads the UBI to no. verify that it's no, in yes, correct state? Yeah, you recommended to doing that. Uh, because yeah. to, to, to do some maintenance on the noun. Yeah, because if you have like a rescue UBI volume and you just leave it in the NAND and never touch it, it will eventually develop some sort of like issues, some bit flips and all that. And Ubi doesn't generally just fix it for you when it's running. So you have to read or do something, like read out the volume so that Ubi would actually rescan those uh, blocks and, and fix those bit flips. Do you do anything like that? Not yet. You should. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Shouldn't we fix that in a kernel? Shouldn't we? Uh, there was a discussion on the empty okay. list. <coughs> How do you produce the bundles? Do you use a build server or do you just use your computer? We have, we have one uh, 12 core machine which builds uh, the Octo distribution in if it, if, if it after a clean in 20 minutes. And if you just do some more small changes, it's in one minute or 30 seconds. The, the question is because we have a similar issue and uh, we are trying to figure out the best way of handling the, our, our key for signing the bundle. Uh, and right now we are using a, a USB device where we keep the, uh, yeah, the key. Do you, you have something similar or just Not keep yet. the certificate? That's why we did a validity of 100 years. Because <laughs> we don't have an uh, SSL infrastructure, a certificate infrastructure yet. Okay. It's on the list. Uh, but for this project, it was not important because the, our client didn't even want to update, so he didn't even, he even cared less about sing, uh, signing, uh, signing your bundle. 
So are you using like, uh, you said you're using NAND, right? So those things, you know, you know about the where on those, right? Like where they lose data after like two years. Not, I mean, not where, um, just like they hold data for like yeah. two years before they just like go kaput. Okay. I am aware of that. That's what <laughs> they call um, programmed obs uh, obsolete, obs uh, what do you say? Programmed? Uh, no, it's just the, the, the voltages drop and then like basically the cells lose their memory. And I was not I was not involved at all in choosing the hardware. For yeah, you project. gotta be careful with hardware you choose because of like course. flash controllers. Yes, on yes, those it's, chips it's are a problem like we it's a problem <coughs> we are all aware <laughs> of. I might have a leading question for you. Um, where would you recommend to put the bootloader on such a embedded device? Uh, would you have some sort of better solution than NAND maybe? <laughs> I mean, nor, yeah. <laughs> and um, like, if you can fit it into, <laughs> no, not definitely not SD card. No, so 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 what you would do is um, uh, use like a re file system with internal redundancy to mi maybe mitigate like so like something with the checksum where you can detect bad blocks or um, uh, and then they do internal RAID one on the device so. Um, I have a question for you as well. With regards to NAND, sure. um, <laughs> you said that it might uh, fail uh, yeah. after two years, but does it also fail if you reread it uh, regularly, or is it a different type of, of failure? Uh, so I work with some NAND flash controller designers in Shenzhen, and then some of them do some really iffy stuff, like that you can choose how long your data lasts mm -hmm. uh, based on how much over-provisioning and how much error correction yeah. is in there but you're not gonna get rid of the fundamental problem of um, like, you know, the cells losing charge. Um, you can go down as, like on the flash controllers, you can go down as low as six months of data retention or three months of data retention. And then uh, most people don't design anything lower, but you could. And then when you're dealing with China, one of the things is like, could means yes means cheaper. And that's where it gets a little precarious. Um, but in terms of SLCs, more stable, when you get the QLC nowadays, it's very unstable, and you know, in order to cut costs, you have to do hardware control at very low level. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you are using uh, AB partition scheme for your update. Did you consider to use uh, incremental updates from uh, ROC? to save the open width on the LoRa uh, network. No, no, it's not the LoRa, it's a 3G network, but it's a, yeah. the same problem. Uh, yes, but the version, uh, I, I don't know if you, if you, I talked maybe very fast, but um, when I when I backported the changes from, from the ROC uh, master branch to the branch I am using for my version of Yocto, mm -hmm. what I had to remove was exactly a tool, which I don't remember the name, which does the, which creates in fact an incremental bundle. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is possible. In future versions, we will we will use it. Okay. But wh what we will do in future versions of new hardware, not for this product, for other products, is we will do a, a read-only rootfs and a data partition which will be bigger. Because it, uh, here we here in fact what we what we see here is that we have 250 megabytes for this system and 250 megabytes for this system. But in fact, the rootfs the the, the program data is just 60 mega. So we we lose. We lose uh, uh, 190 megabyte uh, on the other system, which we are not using because the system is not active. So what we should actually do, and there are other advantages to do this, is a read-only rootfs for both systems and a data a data uh, partition of volume, which is staying the same. So this is what we would do now with all we have learned, uh, and adding functionality rescue, of course. Um. No, first, first. Uh, well, have you tried other kind of system of uh, update like Mender or software update or uh, only Rogue? I Mender I learned about afterwards and uh, I, I looked at software update, uh, especially because there was talk last year here, but I don't, I didn't care about web server and about the nice web interface. I, what I, what I wanted to, 
I looked at both of them, and at the same time, I found that Phytek is using Rauk, and Phytek is very closely uh, bound with Pengotronics, and Pengotronics is developing Rauk. And I was saying, if I go to software update, uh, maybe we'll have not so much support. So there was also this decision. And it was working. It was working out of the box, and it was fully fulfilling my needs. OK, thank you. And uh, in general, my, my, my also software, when I do applications and libraries, uh, how do I, have, I have a principle, which is, I don't buy a refrigerator which is also containing a freezer. I don't like it because if the freezer breaks, the refrigerator won't work anymore and the other way around. So I prefer to have a ROG thing and a web service independently which will maybe interact with the ROG. So that's the philosophy. So ROG was, was playing nicely for that for me. Yeah, last question um, from Marek. So a bit of a comment about the very last and very short. You have one um, 10 I have, seconds. I have one comment about the software update. You can disable the web server. So yeah, but still inside. There's that. <laughs> uh, well, it's compiled out. But uh, about the uh, read-only root file system, you can't really do that with uh, ubi on NAND. Because if you read out a block and the ubi detects that there is a bit flip in it, there is an ACC error, it will relocate it. And it will write into the NAND. So it's not truly read-only. I believe the better suggestion would be to have your standard UBFS and on top of that put overlayFS, which would dump the changes into a separate uh, UBFS. And then if you want to do factory reset, just scrub the overlayFS from that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. <laughs>